Howdy folks, my name is Endor, and it's about time we take a look back at peak cinema. This is what Martin Scorsese wants in theaters. I'm of course talking about the esteemed Yokai Watch movie, specifically the dub which is in theaters for one day only back in October 15th, 2016. That was almost eight years ago now, and yet I remember that day and theater experience vividly. I'll have to talk about that later, because we've got a lot to get into with this movie. Returning to it after such a long time, I expected to have much more to criticize about it, but no, it's just as charming as I remember, and it makes me just so happy and smiley. Of course, it isn't perfect. F far from perfect, definitely. But still, we'll get into that soon enough. So before we get started, if you enjoy the video, I hope you won't mind liking and subscribing. It really helped me out, and I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Now, time for Yokai. The movie's story is actually very similar to the story of Yokai Watch 2. Almost. The general plot points are the same for the most part, but the journey to progress the story is very different from game to film. There's actually a lot of changed or missing parts from the game, and that's for the sake of having a way better movie structure. Because literally recycling a video game story into a movie would be stupid. The story follows Nate Adams, who after having the yokai watch taken from him by a nefarious shift in the timeline, forgets all about the existence of yokai, including his yokai friends. That is until reports of strange activity in Springdale catch up to Nate, and he catches the attention of a giant yokai who informs him of an evil plot decades in the making, leading to an adventure to the past when the yokai watch was first invented. Now, Nate and his yokai friends must restore the timeline before true evil takes control of the human and yokai world. Right off the bat, I would like to mention that since this movie was connected to the anime, there was actually a few moments in the anime itself that tied directly into the plot of the movie, including Kin and Gin, assistant antagonist to the movie's villain, attempting to disrupt the timeline by changing up Jibanyan and Whisper's past lives so they would never become Nate's friends. But luckily both attempts failed as Jibanyan and Whisper made the right choices to let the past be and not to dwell on them. Which are actually very dark moments in the anime. Actual lives were on the line and even lost. And we just kind of get back to dilly-dallying right after. Like, geez. So yeah, there's a bit of lead up to the movie from the show itself, which is pretty neat. Other than that, the story itself is quite simple. Plot beats come together as you can expect. It's definitely not the movie's strong suit. There are a few moments that stand out for their impact and execution, but they're scarce. I'd say the game itself does the story way more justice, and considering that's the original way it was meant to be experienced, more going with it to boot, that's not surprising. Luckily, that's not the focus. Three, one, time! Crack like a boom boom! Whisper, go crack like a boom boom! Now we get into the charmingly weird as we talk about the characters. We have our main star, Nate Adams, who once again becomes an average boy while his yokai watch is missing, only to be reminded of who he really is and realize just how special his friendships with the yokai really are. He can get pretty overwhelmed with the absurdity of them sometimes, but what is friendship if not caring for each other and saving the world? We then of course have everyone's favorite yokai butler, Whisper, just as loyal and lovable as ever and as we now know, surprisingly powerful with his influence to make humans speak nonsense. He's quite the blabbermouth, but he's always by Nate's side 100% of the way. And we of course can't forget about Jibanyan, the lazy but fierce red cat yokai with a hatred for trucks and a love for choco bars. Now knowing the truth behind his death, Jibanyan has more determination than ever to show what he's really made of, and just in time too with the world at stake. But the trio of friends aren't alone, as they come face to face with the mighty Hovernyan, a yokai who had been wandering the world for 60 years in search of the one who could befriend the spirits. He is righteous and selfless like no other, being one of the many yokai who have dedicated themselves to befriending the creator of the yokai watch, Nathaniel Adams, Nate's grandfather. Nathaniel is someone with a need to protect the ones he cares about training every day to be a hero like the comic hero Maximus Mask. 
And after finding a lens that allows him to see the yokai, he has helped many a yokai with their struggles and troubles, and yet refuses to befriend any of them, despite how much they all care about him. All the results of nefarious changes to the timeline, brought by the villainous force known as the Wicked. The Wicked are a tribe of yokai created by unnatural means, and unlike most yokai, they exclusively cause inspirited humans to become violent and dangerous, even inspiriting yokai of other tribes to do the same. The most common wicked are the monsters, having three distinct variations, all of which wander to spread evil in the human world. Then we have the brains of the operation, Kin, Gin, and Bronzlo, a sibling trio with extraordinary magical powers and the ability to alter time at a whim. They are manipulative geniuses, responsible for forcing various yokai to relive their pasts in the hopes their subjects make a different choice to change the timeline. While they are dangerous, all of the wicked are nothing compared to their creator, Dame Dead Time. The leader of the entire tribe, Dame Dead Time is a yokai filled with extreme hatred towards humanity, and to an extent, yokai who befriend humans. After a lifelong tragedy in her human life, she has dedicated her yokai existence to altering the timeline to its worst possible outcome. Where evil overtakes the world, yokai world included. Taking down such a vast army of evil would be a challenge. But luckily for our heroes, there is a yokai with the wisdom, the skills, the key to defeating Dame Dead Time. The fabled Master Nyada. One of the most powerful yokai in existence, few have actually seen him, but those who have know the intensity of his skills are unmatched. And it's all thanks to something known as the Hose, a special force practiced by Master Nyata, and hopefully the key to taking down the Wicked. Yeah, there are a lot of characters that have a role in the movie, including dozens of other yokai cameos and the like. But the ones who get focus are very enjoyable. The writing in the dove is much sillier compared to the original, and while that does detract so for some parts in the movie, its silliness is not the stupid kind, it's just very wacky. Something that really makes this version stand out is how surprisingly meta the writing is. The characters really like to make playful jabs at the plot or behave way more over the top than they do in the anime, and it's hilarious. In no small part to the actors' deliveries, whispers especially, if I can, I'll show some of my favorite moments right here. Enjoy! Whoa! He got the big letters! Did you see that? Huh? Uh, I see everything. I could tell you now, but if I did, then you might not watch the movie. Hey, wait, I've already died once. This won't kill me. Oh, but it still might really hurt. This is only happening because we had the villain trapped, so she had to turn into a CGI monster in order to make the movie more exciting. Look in the marble. Look in the, look in the marble. Gusty Crosspool! When it comes to the movie's animation, it's a much higher production value compared to the anime, of course. And the anime's animation is already really good, so the movie's visuals really took everything up a notch or two. Well, except for a couple CGI shots which stand out quite a bit, but they're mostly reserved for background assets, so it's not terrible. And unlike the anime, character proportions and sizes stay much more consistent, which is always my main issue for the show's visuals. And now that it's fixed, it's delightful eye candy. Very colorful environments, lovely character designs, all that fun stuff. Hey, come on, let's go! <laughs> and obviously, the film's music is fantastic. Do I even have to mention that at this point? This is Yo-Kai Watch music we're talking about here, which is famously amazing. And the cool thing is that the music is mostly from Yo-Kai Watch 2, the game, including a lot of tracks, originally from that game specifically. And 2's soundtrack is the most aesthetic in the franchise, so they give off some pretty impressive atmosphere in the movie. A lot of it is like giving a warm hug to your ears. That's how I describe it. It's just super cozy. The only musical sin I'd give the movie is regarding the song that plays when Nate regains his memories, as it's a film exclusive version of the Swampy Marsh theme song, except with different lyrics. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't say it sucks, I'd say it blows. 
Basically everything beside the original's instrumental is changed to a much worse and way less iconic song. They even took out the socks missing in the dryer lyric. This is criminal, dude. Oh well, the rest of the music makes up for it, so I'll let it slide this time. I'll let it slide. To quote Whisper, you get what you get and you don't get upset. And before I share my final thoughts, I'd like to quickly reminisce on the day this movie was in theaters, because I was lucky enough to have a pretty good theater experience with it. And I still remember going into that theater and being surprised by how packed the entire room was. There was people sitting in the, the seats, of course, and also, you know, the staircases and the, the bottom row in front of the screen, because they obviously overpacked and didn't expect this many people to be wa wanting to watch the movie. And it was pretty good. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. We were all laughing. We were all just having a good time with it. And of course, after the movie was over, because of how overpacked the theater was, um, they didn't really have many remaining of the Hovering Yon Metal. So there was a lot of people who didn't get to get one, including me, sadly. But you know what? It wasn't a big deal. And then I'm pretty sure after the movie was over, I went to like Dave and Buster's or something. Um, anyway. The Yokai Watch movie isn't amazing, but it sure is an enjoyably goofy experience. Filled with lots of charming bits and greatly accomplishing its goal of being a fun time from beginning to end, it's such a sadness that it's no longer on Netflix, because it's one of those movies you revisit on a rainy day, and it's another reminder of the special impact Yokai Watch had on many people all those years ago. And it still brings a smile to my face the same way it did when it first released. It just feels like such a classic, and for that, I'll gladly give the Yokai Watch movie a B+. It doesn't have the best plot in the world, and maybe isn't the greatest dub either, but doggone it, I love it. And with all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I also hope you won't mind liking and subscribing if you did. Be sure the yokai don't take your socks from the dryer, and have a great day everyone!